in the know, nonstop Vikings talk. It's Purple Daily on Score North and ScoreNorth.com. Purple Daily, presented by Surly Brewing Company. They are probably in a position where they could take just the you know the best mm-hmm. player and say we'll figure out how to use him, and then take the next best player and we'll figure out how to use him. And you know, and, and you know, the Vikings have had so many late round picks mm-hmm. the last couple of years, and I feel like none of them are on the roster. Um, and that is a problem, mm-hmm. and that's something, you know, talk about why guys have lost jobs, like that's part of the reason. That's another area that needs to be better, mm-hmm. uh, and I think it will be. Um, and, you know, I would say that's one of kind of the areas of focus going forward. Ian Rappaport, NFL Network, talking about the Vikings and their roster construction problems. Welcome into Purple Daily, presented by our friends at Surly Brewing. More on that later, and also by our friends at TCL TV. Enjoy more with TCL. If you're not watching sports on TCL, I'm going to tell you right now, you're not doing it right. TCL TV. All right. Zolgad, executive producer. Declan Goff and Chip Scoggins promoted to Purple Daily with Phil out. That's right. Getting the call up, call, coming off the bench, QB2 to QB1. No pressure. No pressure, man. But you are on the big show. And I'm going to start you off with this. I'm going to call it Chip's Choice. Okay. Because, like, we've talked a ton about Kirk and Combine stuff. I want to know, Chip's Choice, what is on your mind? What What is at the forefront of your, your mind as far as storyline and thoughts when it comes to the Vikings as we make our way through Combine Week here? Well, I guess this makes me the assistant CEO, right? Is that uh, That's right, yeah. The, That's uh, Mackey's. A, a assistant to the CEO. A C- yeah, a yeah. Twitter, a, a Vikings Twitter, which is a, which again is a very big mantle. And be careful because a lot of people already hate you now just because of that. It comes with big responsibility, I know. It um, does. Yeah, I, obviously the Cousins thing is the number one issue. But beyond that, I mean, that is item number one. But, yeah, I still go back to how are you going to fix this defense? And and I think O'Connell and, and Kwesi talked about it yesterday at the, at the Combine, being a puzzle and realizing that I think Donatel now is probably going through all the – the film and tape of of the defense last from last year to figure out who stays, who fits in the three four. Mm-hmm. Uh, they obviously have to get with with uh, Rob Brzezinski to figure out contracts and and all that the salary cap uh, ramifications. But I, to me, is you're not going to go forward in, until you fix the defense, and by fixing it, you're going to have to inject a lot of new young talent in there because as uh Rappaport just mentioned in that thing coming in, it's like they have a lot of draft picks and not a whole lot to show for it. Right. Yes. We, yes. Um, they, they mortgaged it by bringing in veteran guys um, basically to try to win now and, and save jobs. That didn't work. Injuries hit. They didn't have the depth that they need. And so it's, that is a major uh, construction project that they have on their hands with the defense. And yet it's, it's in my opinion, great because you've got time here. Like I, I would like to consult Mark Wilf and say, Mark, you need to stop with the 2022. We're going to be competitive. You might be, I don't know, but to put that, in people's heads. And I mean, once fans hear that, right. They're, they're like mm-hmm. the Vikings said they're going to be competitive. It, no, it's not. That's not the statement. The statement is we are going to construct the best franchise possible. And by the way, we did take a shot. Like you did take your shot. So it's not like um, it's not like the Zim Spielman thing was Detroit Lion esque, right? So what I would tell Mark is back off a little bit and allow these guys the time and patience, Chip, to do exactly what you just said. Because this notion that you're going to arrive uh, to training camp this summer. And be like, we are ready to go. It's all fixed. That's folly. But that's yeah. okay. That's how this. Th- that's how these processes work. I'm good with that. Yeah, I, I think the defense is going to be a multiple year thing, and, and yeah. obviously the quarterback situation um, is, is, you know, who we'll see how they go in that direction. But let's assume where I think the the, the competitive talk comes in, or the super competitive. I think is what Mark Wolf said. I think where that comes in is. 
if you assume that Kirk Cousins is your quarterback, then this should be a top 10 offense. Easy. Sure. Sure. Because it's it's been on the outskirts with a, a head coach that wants to run the ball and play conservative, right? So now you bring in an offensive guy who presumably is going to try to squeeze more out of it and can squeeze more out of it. And mm-hmm. when you look who they have coming back, assuming they don't make any major changes because of salary cap uh, necessity, that offense uh, should be super competitive, right? That's probably where the feeling comes. When you look at veteran quarterback. Justin Jefferson, Dalvin, Thielen, an offensive line that has some it, some pieces, yeah, uh, some tight ends that that can do some things. Um, I think that's where the I think that's where the the perception of super competitive comes in. But it it, it does that defense is I, I don't even know where to you know that's that's not going to transform itself overnight. I don't think. Chip, it should be, but here's the thing. Let it happen then. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, don't tell me your team wasn't good enough in 2021 to be like coaching change, GM change. It's all fixed. If if it had, I mean, Philadelphia made the playoffs, so I am mm-hmm. not closing the door on your potential. But the super competitive thing is, you know what? If that takes place, that is super fun and that's great. But it's an unnecessary statement to make because. Yeah. As you just said, this defense is going to take a couple of years. It's going to be in transition, and that's fine. That's how things work. I just, I think the messaging is wrong, and I know why they do it. I would guard against it. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, nobody wants to say this is going to take a while. I mean, we're right. Settle in, folks. This is this is not you know. Mm-hmm. No, you want you want to create the perception that we're not taking a step back. We're, you know, we're, we're plowing ahead because we have talent here and, and that's fine. I mean, that's to, to feel that, but I, I think you also have to be realistic about, uh, you had one of the worst defenses in, in pro football and, um, you have veterans that you have to make decisions on there. You have a bunch of free agents. I was reading the day from Andrew Kramer's piece. Was it six of their top nine guys in, in, in playing time on defense last year, are free agents, are they all coming back? Do you want them back? Um, nope. You have a bunch of young guys that you don't really know much about because uh, either they didn't play or they're still young, and you have to figure out if, if they're going to be part of your future. And oh, by the way, you're switching to the three-four. So how does that all how does that all fit? You know. So to me, that's um, obviously we're going to focus so much on and Daniel Hunter, which I think you'll get that done. I mean, that doesn't concern me. You'll you'll uh, he's too good a player and too valuable at that position um, to not get it done. But um, yes, so much attention is going to be paid on cousins, but really the heavy lifting is going to be on the other side of the ball. Chipper, if, if you uh, were in Quasi's shoes and, and could maybe go on the defensive side and, and let, let's also have the assumption that there is some cap space to play with, with restructures, reworking, how, whatever, uh, what have you, what, what's one position that you would look to address? Because uh, I think NFL.com Today they they put out Emmanuel Agba as a maybe a, as a defensive end fit for the Vikings. Agba a nice player with Miami, eighteen sacks the last two seasons. But if you were running the Vikings, what's one area that you would immediately address in free agency? Uh, I would pull out my Zim card and say cornerback. <laughs> I mean, I, I think you got to have more cornerbacks. Um, not knowing, you know, I Pat Peterson I assume might come back, but we, we don't know, you know. Uh, Mackenzie Alexander may or may not. He didn't have a good year. Breland, I, I don't know, what, you know, um, what you'd think there, but th- they need more corners. Obviously, rush in is a premier position too, and you, they need to upgrade there. Um, obviously, being able to create more pressure is is the way to improve a defense too, in, in a in a uh, immediate impact. But I think they definitely need to be on a defensive side, and I would probably list cornerback first and then rush in second. But without knowing, like, then you have to factor in, okay, it's one position deeper than the other. Can you get the other one in the second round? Because there's going to be more of those guys. That's what you have to factor in, which I I honestly don't know yet. And th- th- that's why, outside of Kirk, the, the, the next – few weeks coming up to March 16th, which is the start of the league year, is going to be so interesting to watch because they're going to have to make decisions on on how to get below the cap. But then, I guess most importantly, Chip, how far below the cap that they attempt to go to actually 
sign guys, which is yeah. why this is not just a question of, well, we're just going to restructure this guy and restructure that guy. Yes, that's going to take place. But more importantly is who are you going to cut bait with entirely to create cap room to sign guys? Because like you can't look at defensive end to your point, cornerback, uh, guard, or center. I don't believe both, but one, and say, "Yeah, we're fine there." No, no matter no, what no, O'Connell no, yeah. said at his uh, combine press conference, Garrett Bradbury's not good. So the reality <laughs> is, is like well beyond Kirk, there become questions about what you're going to address, and most importantly, how aggressive and how you're going to do it. And that's where the yeah. cap be- becomes the the most important talking point with this entire team. Yeah. I mean, obviously the, the offensive line interior with, with guard and center needs to be addressed and, you know, it, it'll be interesting to see like, can they, with their cap situation, Judd, can they even be a player in the free agent market for some of these positions? If you get rid of guys, you probably you are, can. Yeah, if you, you don't, you, you can't. Yeah. So it is okay. Like what veterans are, you feel like, okay, we need to get younger there and cheaper there. Um, the Anthony Barr one to me is still fascinating. They they continue to talk him up in the, in this three four scheme, and I know that's coming out of college. Yeah. That's where he was projected, and and but at what price tag, Judd? You know, well, that's interesting that you say that because I I've been charting what I am going to call a pattern of fibs with Quazy <laughs> and O'Connell. The sports lies, Judd. Sports yeah. lies are okay. Yeah. Remember sports that. Sports lies are okay. But, I'm, but, but I mean, these guys are trying to be so nice. I'm going with fibs. I'm going with, you know what? This is going to cost you your dessert. You can eat your dinner. <laughs> um, it's it's a pattern of fibs, okay? But why and talk so, him up? Why, why talk so, him up if he... I don't know, but here's the pattern. The bar one was first. At first, I thought, because it was O'Connell's first press conference, that he legitimately didn't know the contractual status of bar. But now yeah. he continues to talk about it. So that's one. The Bradbury one was just a lie. You know, Garrett Bradbury, <laughs> we build set. You, no, you don't build anything around Garrett Bradbury. He's a bust. I, I don't expect you to say he's a bust, Kevin O'Connell, but yeah. I do expect you to sort of tap dance and you didn't. Um, the other one that they've that they've talked about is how how things are different personnel-wise from what the Rams have. And so that, that O'Connell might consider doing things differently personnel package-wise uh, because – this team has CJ Ham. CJ Ham's a fullback. You're not going to use one. He is going to be gone. And I mean, I hear he's a great yeah. guy. This is nothing yeah. personal. But CJ Ham, but if they have a fullback on their <laughs> roster on the field, I will be astounded. And the other one is well, we've got two tight ends. Tyler Conklin is a free agent. Someone's yeah. going to give him more. There is no way that the Vikings are going to, to say, you know what we have to do? We have to make an expenditure to bring Conklin back when we plan on Irv Smith playing. So, like, the pattern of fibs, the Pinocchio, as I t- told Dex <laughs> on on Wednesday, the Pinocchio nose is growing a little bit more. There's definitely some things that, th- that these guys say that I find to be interesting and I think we can interpret. But there's yeah. definitely things that, you know, like, we might alter our personnel packages because we have <laughs> C.J. Ham. Kevin, come on. I like anyway. the fib. Pattern yeah. of fibs. Yeah, that's, that's I'm good. writing them down uh, now. I didn't. Yeah, I did not buy the Bradbury for even a split second. No, uh, I didn't. Yeah, I was right laughing. There. The CJ Ham uh, idea that you're going to have, you know, be more versatile because you have a fullback now. Oh yeah. Less than you know, more than Bradbury, but I still don't. I'm not buying it. Yeah. The bar one, I just, I, I. Interesting. Yeah. It's interesting, and it's it's been repeated. So it wasn't just like a. Hey, I'm just up here on my first day talking about how great their roster is. You know, maybe Donatel goes to him and says, "In my three-four scheme, I like he, I like to fit." But again, Judd, at what cost? At what cost? This is uh, where the hard oh, yeah. decision. And that's the question. This, you're right. This is where the, the the you know the puzzle, as they have, as Quasi has mentioned, this thing's a big puzzle, and um, that's where they're going to have to, you know really make some tough choices about uh, what they want and what they can actually pull off because they're two different things at this point when you're 11 million over the cap, right? Yes. I mean, you, you may want all these things, but when you get in the room with Rob Brzezinski and he's like, no, 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 no. It's not I've seen work. six, Chip, I, I've seen uh, 16. 
that there's 16 o- over the cap. 16, so, okay, yeah. Well, yeah, I, but so, I mean, yes, they they have they are going to have to, at some point in time, make what are going to probably be considered by some tough decisions. But that's their job now. Like, that's the that's beauty. It, yeah. You get that's to start what you signed over. up for. This is what exactly. you signed well, up and, for. And if I'm them, I'm excited about it. I'm like, yeah, hell yeah. yeah. That's why you take the job, to do this. Well, and that, and that goes back to the patience part of it, that um, there is there is an element of, you know, the previous regime mortgaged the future in a lot of ways to try to win yep. now and save jobs. And guess what? That bill is going to come due eventually, and it's coming due. And so along with, you know, these, you have a, a, a core of veterans that make a lot of money yep. um, are, are either going to be hitting the uh, – the backside or, or, you know, are, are already there. And so that's where this off season, I would have, you know, I'm sure they had some fascinating conversations in their, in their suite at the uh, Indianapolis JW Marriott with uh, agents of players uh, on the roster. Right. Just trying to figure out like, Hey, you're going to have to restructure or, you know, or, or at least, you know, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Chipper, if you could only bring back one of these guys, and I know Anthony Barr had that void year, but if you could only bring back one of these three, if you had the choice between Eric Kendricks, Harrison Smith, and Anthony Barr, which one of those three would you want to stay and keep here uh, for the Vikings in 2022? Wow. You only get it would, one. It, yeah. Um, definitely between Kendricks and Harris, Harrison. Um That's tough. That's tough because I think uh, they're both valuable in their own way. I know how Judd feels about safety position. Um, I do think Smith is coming back. I I, I just I yeah. have a feeling. But if you only if you only have to pick one, I ah, I think man. Kendricks would be gone. Yeah, I think probably Harrison because he can he's he gives you more versatility. Yes. Um, and not to say you can just plug in linebackers because that's not fair. I think Kendricks is a pretty unique talent with his um, coverage ability and the, the splash plays he makes. Yep. Um, but I probably would lean Harrison on that one. What about you, Dick? You know, I, I'm leaning towards Harrison too. Um, I just think even though his his play kind of he's up there in age for sure, but. Th- they talk about the illusion of complexity all the time on the offense, right? That's their new buzzword. And mm-hmm. Harrison Smith is the definition of the illusion of complexity when he plays defense, right? He'll come up on the yeah. line, he'll drop back, he'll drop in, he'll blitz up. Um, he, he literally is the definition of the illusion of complexity and something that I think Kevin O'Connell, as a head coach and OC who has the game plan against the Vikings in the previous life, probably circles him as that first guy of how can we deceive Harrison Smith or what can we do to potentially try to get, get after him. Yeah, and you know, obviously the the clip from Aaron Rodgers this year, some of that was probably stroking the ego of of Harrison, but I, I think there's also some truth in that too. That hey, he, he you know the cat and mouse game with him uh, is maybe more difficult than than other defensive guys. He so I, I do think there's probably uh, the guys that really study it and know it. They probably realize this guy creates a lot of confusion with with what he does. And I, I also think just from a standpoint of discussing uh, Smith and Kendricks, I, I feel like Eric Kendricks is physically more beat up than Smith is. Like, I think... The, uh, the, seemed like last the, year, yeah. Yeah, and, you know, I mean, both of them play incredibly tough positions, but it just feels like the years in the league, and I could be wrong, have taken more of a toll on Kendricks. And so, like, that has to play... Mm-hmm. A role too, because if you're going to cut a guy, you ba- you you definitely want to cut the guy who who you think has ex- has given you his best years. Yeah. So yeah i I am not huge on paying safeties, and, and I would definitely look to get uh, Smith's cap hit for 2022 down. But that being said, I have a feeling he stays. And Chip, you're right. The bar thing is just sort of weird. I don't know what to make of that. Uh, there, there's a sunk cost on the cap of what, 14, 12 
million dollars with, with with him already. Yeah, ten, 10 million. But yeah, yeah. So it's a very inter- that's an interesting one. And and you know, you are right. For how many years did we sit here and say, "Oh my God, can you imagine that that he'd be a Jason Taylor in a three four, and now you're going to yeah. play a three four, and he's probably gone." But you know what, too, guys, this also could very much c- come back to because it's the unanswered question: Daniel Hunter here. Uh, cause I'm, I'm with you, Chip. I think that in a perfect world, you, you, uh, smooth his, his cap hit or, or if you can redo his contract and you keep him and he is the stand up guy when you're in a three, four. And when you go to a nickel four, three, he's got a hand on the ground and that's great, but we still don't have any idea how he feels about this. And I will always go back to when Jared Allen still in the prime of Jared's career. And we said there are there are rumors out there that Les Frazier might switch to a 3-4, and Jared said, well, then I'm gone. Yeah, I'm out of here, yeah. But but yeah. Jared talked. Daniil doesn't. So yeah. internally, is is he stoked about this? Is he excited? Or is he saying, yeah, you know what? If you're going to be in 3-4 as a base, I would pr- much prefer to be in a 4-3 consistently yeah. with, with my hand down – on the line. I mean, it's just, it is a different type of world potentially. Not that I don't think that, and he would be good. I just think that it's a conversation that we don't know the answer to. Yeah. I mean, Daniel Hunter is going to be good in any system he put him in. He's just that, Mm -hmm. that, that good a talent. Uh, I'm, I'm fascinated to find out if, and when they do get that contract settled with him, what the number is, because, a year ago, I felt like he, even though he was coming off that uh, injury, he still had leverage because it was only one year, and and um, if he was healthy, they needed him badly uh, to win. And 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 he, you know he's obviously uh, putting up historic numbers, sacks. And this is two years, you know. I'd be curious to see, like, from his you know, his camp, I'm sure they still think they have the leverage because he is, but he put up, you know, when he's healthy, he puts up those numbers, but this is two years where he hasn't been healthy. And exactly. Um, I, I would love to know like how difficult those, those uh, negotiations are going to be. Um, Cause the Vikings have, have absolutely the right to say, Hey, you played what? Seven games in two years, seven games in two years. That's, that's a lot of missed football. And you know what, Chipper? That, that means that this team has a lot of decisions and some of them tough to make. But you know what's not tough? If you are Judd or Chip, do you know what's the easiest, the most slam dunk, the thing that you don't have to think about at all? That is with the weekend approaching, what am I going to drink? What's my beer? <laughs> no, you don't have to think about that. And Chip Scoggins, I've got advice for you right now. Yes, Surly's great, right? Furious is great, but what if I was to tell you about the first Surly Variety Pack of 2022 that I guarantee you is in your your local liquor store right now, and I was to tell you it included Furious, Havoc Machine, Ghost Empire Dark Lager, and my personal new fave, and one I want you to try and report back to me on, the Hyper Modern Idaho 7 IPA. I'm going to tell you right now, unbelievable. Knocks your socks off, decks Swears but buy it too. Very good. This is good stuff. I want you, I want you to at least call an audible of sorts <laughs> and at least pick up the first surly variety pack of this year. Try the hyper modern Idaho seven IPA and tell me what you think. It will take a lot to get me off of Furious. That's a big audible. I want you to try is, it. I want you is, to try it. You know what? 2022. Things are changing. Yeah. The Furious is still there. It's still it's still a bell cow. I'm not saying abandon yeah. it. What I'm saying do is I will do try the Justin. It this is the Justin Jefferson. This wow. is the it's that good. It's outstanding. Wow. It's unbelievable. I will do it tonight. It's unbelievable. So I got one in, in a yeah. positive vein, too. So like there's, you know, this team has decisions to make. Some are going to be tough. Some guys who I think fans like are going to be gone. But you know what? I think below the radar excites me most. The opportunity to look at 
sort of what I would consider to be an entire draft class that has been un- unexplored. The 2021 yeah. class. Like, think about that. Darisaw played, and I think he's good. But beyond mm-hmm. that, like, there are so many questions and guys who didn't play and we don't know about. And and in the case of a Wyatt Davis just got cast aside, I am. It's almost going to be for O'Connell. I think like two draft classes. Because I, yeah. there's no way that you can tell me with a straight face that the rest of that draft class was a complete washout. I mean, they just weren't given the opportunity. I am really excited to see that class take the field and get some meaningful snaps. Yeah, it's almost like Zim and Spillman said, okay, you guys are redshirting this year. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. like- I think Zim said that, don't you? <laughs> I think Rick said, what the hell are you doing? I'm going to quit talking to you, Mike. And Mike said, I don't give a damn, Rick. And they both slammed their doors and went their separate ways. Yeah, I mean, the the Wyatt Davis one is the one that just baffles me the most. Uh, When you were desperate, I mean, desperate for help in the interior. Like, he couldn't even get a sniff of the field. So, um, I don't know if that was just a Zim being angry or if is there something you know davis of course well he was pouting he was mad it's not as good as we i don't know he spent I spent the whole I, year I, pouting i agree i i want to see this we saw a little bit of buying them right um yeah but yeah this i i you know for those guys that were in that rookie class yep i'm sure there's this is a huge welcome to him to say i have a chance now this is like a, a clean fresh start to you know uh, show what they can do. And so, um, you know, and some of them, maybe they just whiffed on, but uh, I agree with you. You can't tell me that all these guys were just not good enough to get on the field. So, um, and here's the thing, they're probably going to need them, right? Because if they have to over turn over this roster, some, yes. with some of the veterans, you're going to need these guys to step in and play roles. So yeah, I agree. And uh, these next couple, this, you know, that one, this draft coming up and the next one to really inject uh, this roster with some new young talent. Um, they need, particularly on defense, um, I feel like I've been harping on, but they need to get that 22 to 25 year old core group that can build together and grow together because they just don't have it right now. Mm-hmm. Chipper, you uh, you obviously are a big fan of college football and you've covered the Gopher football team for years now. Any chance that Kevin O'Connell looks across the river to his buddy P.J. Fleck during these combine talks and uh, potentially maybe selects one of these four Gophers who could be going in the 2022 NFL draft? Well, it's funny. I think Kuiper had Boyamafe mm-hmm. 30, 30 in his, uh, in his latest mock. I mean, he obviously had a great senior bowl. Um Freakish athlete. We've seen what he can do. I mean, he he, he became more well, well-rounded the last couple of years, and uh, I assume he's working out the combine. He, he'll blow him away there because he's just a freak athlete. Um, so he won't be available there, I don't think, when they come back around. Um, you know, uh, five, I mean, they're you know they're set at tackle, I think, right? Um, maybe. Uh, with file, you know, file A they wouldn't be there. They wouldn't want to right tackle. But Blaze Andrews is a is a kid that's played four line positions, right? Everything but center. He's a versatile guy. Can go inside, outside. You know, maybe he's a guy that you look at because they they have to do something to address their interior line. Now we'll see if Wyatt Davis, if they feel like he's you know going to be part. But Andrews is not center. But um, yeah, I mean it's it, it's it's. I think the Gophers have what four guys at the combine, so you're you're starting to see more yeah. and more of the, uh, that program produce guys that are at least getting Senior Bowl invites and combo uh, combine invites. So um, and the other guy, Asesi, uh the d- other defensive end opposite. I mean, he really came on this year, and uh, we talked so much about Boy Mafe as a rush in, but Asesi had a really nice senior year, and uh, I don't know where he's projected to go, but. Um, you know, he's, he's a big guy and, and really, uh, really had a, a terrific year to kind of put himself in that, that uh, draft discussion. Speaking of PJ Fleck, Chip Scoggins, did you see um, among, I believe I counted, I think the, the, if you don't include strength and conditioning, I think the Vikings have, have now 22 assistant coaches on O'Connell staff. Did you see the most yeah. interesting hire PJ yes. take notes, Ryan Cordell, Game management yeah. coordinator. 
Hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah. Right hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's about time. It's yeah. about, yes, yes, young Kevin O'Connell is not going to be um, uh, um, stubborn and be like, I got the end of games. Yep. How great is this to see PJ take notes? Judd, I, I, I'm actually, I think I'm going to do a column on it this weekend that if you count the strength coaches, which everybody does, uh, their full staff is 26 assistant coaches. Yeah. Which is... <laughs> Yep, and I think uh, I, I think the I, entire strength and conditioning staff are back, and I think three guys from the football side of the staff are back, yeah. including Keenan McCardell. Yeah, but yes, I mean, I think we've talked about this a lot. That we have. It just I'm just the glad game, they did it. The game, man, and it's like there's no there's no limit on how many coaches you can have. So why wouldn't you employ one? Correct. It's not like there's it's college, and even college has found a loophole with the football analyst stuff. But but it's not like you have a okay, you can only have this number of coaches. So yes, no salary cap. I mean, there's no salary cap, and so you have, uh, and and those decisions have become uh, so uh, under the microscope. Time yes. out in the halves. Go for yes. it. Don't go for it. Um, game management. I, I assume we've always talked about game management, but is it me? Like in the last few, it's changed three to five years. Have we talked about game management more? Yes. Is that because the NFL? I assume because every every game's close, right? Every game's a field goal. You know, and, comes down to a field goal. And Madden players, Phil and Dex, they're exactly right. They talk about this really? constantly. Kids, oh, really? okay. your I, I guarantee your kids if they play Madden are well versed on what to do situationally. We weren't. Yeah. No, but kids it just now seems know. like. It just seems like uh, those game management, you know, end of half decisions mm -hmm. uh, have become more a focus and more a talker throughout the week than I than I can remember. So it's like <clears throat> partly because we see coaches screw them up all the time, and we saw you know here all the, so well, it's Mike like, was terrible. Yeah, Flex get, awful with it. Get somebody there who's in your ear. Who it's going to be hard for that person. to You know, I always say unemotional, unbiased, where if they're on your staff, they're not going to be. But but someone, and I liked uh, O'Connell's comment about that first day at the combine. He's like, you're thinking about this year round. So I assume they're they're doing like role playing during the offseason. Like, okay, if this comes up, we're going to do this. And some, just, some of it has to come back to gut and how the game flow is going and oh, sure. intuition. But but it sure. also, to have somebody with who's not focused on play calling or what's going, you know, a fight on the sideline or whatever that coaches right. get distracted by. Who's just saying, okay, this is game situation. This is what we got to do. I think it's correct. I think it's genius. Yeah. It's, it's bench coach. Basically do. it's a bench yeah. coach. Same, yeah. same thing. Thank you, sir. Great stuff. All right, boys. Bravo. You, you, you filled in for Mackie in <laughs> remarkable fashion. You didn't bash Kirk. I don't know what to do, but I know. Uh, great stuff. And we will talk to you soon. Chipper. All right, boys. We'll see you. Talk to you. Thanks, Bye. Chip. Yep, I'm just happy. Yeah, no, I'm happy, I too. I am happy about that. In fact, you know what? I am ha happy about that, and I am also, let me tell you right now, thankful and, and happy about my friends at Livia Weight Control Centers who have helped me drop 30-plus pounds. I started at about 240. I am now 204. And I want you to join me because if Judd Zolgad can drop weight and keep that, that weight off, which I'm going to do, then you can do the exact same. And I want you to join me with this deal, the I Did It 8-Week Challenge, where you get your first eight weeks for free. That's right, first eight weeks for free. Just for context, I lost 26 pounds or so in that time. So imagine springtime, you've dropped 26 pounds, and it's for free. 855-GO-L-I-V-E-A, Livia.com, L-I-V-E-A, Dot com and and if you're inside the state, go for consultations, get the food. It's great. If you're outside, Zoom, mm -hmm. Zoom. Mm -hmm. You can talk to a uh, representative here. They will ship you the food. We've had Purple Daily Faithful from Utah, Iowa, California, Texas, New York all join. You can be the next. Livia, L-I-V-E-A dot com, 855, go, L-I-V-E-A, drop those pounds. I'm so glad uh, Chip was here because we had a little bit of insurance, and uh, that's, that's what we needed. We Mackie did. was out. We needed some insurance, just we, like you need some insurance, mm -hmm. some federated mutual insurance, because federated is passionate about the care and the enrichment of the next generation. Just like Chip comes in and steps in for Mackie, 
He 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 is the care and enrichment of the next generation of Vikings football fans. And at the heart of Federated's charitable focus is youth mentoring and their support of big brothers, big sisters. Federated is, a, is proud of the employees who are currently volunteering to be a big brother, big sister, big couple, or big family. And yet there are hundreds of children in southern Minnesota who are still waiting for a big Ignite Your Year, Empower Potential Today. Consider this your personal invitation to learn more about big Brothers, big sisters, together we can make a difference. Thank you to Federated Mutual Insurance. Awesome stuff. Thanks again to uh, Chip Scoggin, Star Tribune Sports Columnist. We are back tomorrow, Declan, with a four-question oh. Friday. Not one, not two, not three, but four, four covering four. all four quarters. Four-question Friday tomorrow on Purple Daily.